But we started the day with the Women's Snowboard Modified Superpipe presented by Toyota, and what a show it was. Todd, the conditions could not have been much better. The sun was out, the pipe, the modified super pipe was on. And speaking of being on, Lu Xiaoyu of China. Well, let's just talk a second about what is a modified super pipe. Well, basically, it's a super pipe, but you add features that you would find in a slope style course. There's jumps, there's channels. You've got to combine all those tricks together to form a perfect run and impress the judges with overall impression, technicality of tricks, and how big you go. China's Lu Xiaoyu laid down a beauty, 92, and that would be the mark that everyone would be chasing. People just could not find the same rhythm. Maddie Mastro tried her best, didn't have to throw out the double crypter, but she would finish in second place. Yeah, Maddie Mastro, you know, she has a big move. It's double of that move right there. She didn't get a chance to bring it out, and it was really all about the rider from China coming through this course. 540s up top, combining them with big 720s in the pipe. Basically just a formula of clean riding all the way through. She did just enough. She was kind of waiting to see if Maddie was going to have right. to throw that double crippler and then kind of base her run off of that. But it was all about those smooth 540s, the 720 back to back in the pipe, and just good combos up top. The judges liked her run to the tune of a 92, and that put the pressure on the rest of the field. In the end, it was Lu Xiaoyu getting it. Maddie Mastro had one more shot curl. Castellet gave it a go, but Maddie just could not solve this hit. Yeah, on run number two, Maddie knew that she had to kind of up the ante. Comes in here, tries to go for the inverted 720 off and over the channel. And then on her third run, Still fresh in her memory, that second run slam goes down on the Crippler over the channel as well. But that left the door open for Coralt Castellet of Spain to come in, find her way on the podium by virtue of a couple big back-to-back -back 900s in the super pipe. So amazing run for her. She was off the podium. It came on her third run. Yep. She gets those back-to-back -back 900s. That was all it took to find herself in third place. Never count the Spaniard out. In the end, Lu Xiaoyu reigning supreme at Copper. 92, Maddie Mastro would finish in second. And Carol Castellet finishing in third at the Women's Snowboard Modified Super Pipe presented by Toyota. There you see a beautiful look up the modified super pipe to the left. Todd Harris, Todd Richards with you on a beautiful day. And uh, the conditions are really totally different from yesterday. It was a powder day. And now we have today. Yeah, we do have today. And, you know, as the day kind of progresses on, I'm going to lay the, lay the um, weather forecast here. It was Bluebird this morning. There's another system that's moving into the Rocky Mountains tonight, th tonight yeah. this afternoon. But before those systems come in, we get a bit of a milky sky. So contrast, not ideal. But what it will do is bring those temperatures down, maybe move the speed up a little bit in the jumps. There's some factors to work with. All that fresh snow kind of leaves, you know, the playing surface in between the jumps really soft. So you have to be on your game. Flat light will play in as the sun begins its westward journey here. But uh, there's going to be some heavy riding going down the slope south. All I can say is watch out Al Roker. This man is after your job. Todd Richards with the forecast on spot here. He has lived in this area for quite some time, so he knows what he's talking about. We'll have much more, including the men's snowboard slope south final, after this. Dew Tour is brought to you by Mountain Dew. Dew the Dew. Toyota. Let's go places. Bumble. Make the first move.
We are ready to ride here at Dew Tour 2020 for the men's snowboard slope style final. 17 man final. It is an absolute beast, but it's a who's who in the world of slope style. The course is buffed out, it is ready to go. Todd has given us his assessment. Could be a little tricky on the lighting later on today for flat light, but Todd, give it up as you said to SPT Woodward for clearing all three feet of snow that came in yesterday. And the guys have been able to go out today and get a little practice in the rails, the creativity. And let's not forget the big kickers that wait for them at the bottom. And it's not just a three pack, this is a monster pack of big launchers. Yeah, and it, it comes after this this first set of features up top. 17 snowboarders, two run, best run counts, overall impression. So it's how you interpret all these rail features, all the jumps, can you put the line together? Will you have consistency of line? If you land backwards on one jump, you don't want to spin around in the flats and get yourself going straight up the next one. You need to keep your consistency of line up. Make sure those grabs are grabbed. No flaps in the air, and you'll come out on top. Todd, you're the man in the know, and you've been around this game for a long time. Who should we be keeping a close eye on? Who do you like if you are a betting man? Well, Max Perot is no stranger to the podium here at yep. Tour. Also, you know, we've got youngsters, Brock Crouch, Judd Henkis, and also, you can't count out Mark McMorris. He knows how to do it, but Stale Sandbeck from last year, coming through in the team competition, destroying this upper section. I look for him to do really well today. It's as, and let's not forget well. the uh, Olympic gold medalist, the reigning Olympic gold medalist, Red Gerard, from just down the road in Silverthorne. Very true. How can I forget about Red Gerard? <laughs> He's got more family members here <laughs> than staff for the Dew Tour. <laughs> All right, let's talk about the competition format. It's a two-run. Because it's such a big field, they were unable to do qualifying. How does that change things up? And you're going to be sitting for a long time. If you're one of the first guys to drop yeah. in a two-run format, you got like one throw away, and then it's game time. Well, Mother Nature forced us into a crunch position. I mean, there was supposed to be a slope-style qualifier or cut down yesterday. Couldn't happen because of all that snow. So what they decided to do is give everyone two shots at this. So you don't have that third right. run the like buffer. saving. You can, uh, you have to throw it down. Run one, run two, the pressure's really on. I kind of like this a little bit better. It kind of forces these guys into throwing their best right straight the out, the, out the gate. 17 man final, they are almost ready to go. Before we release the hounds, let's take a look at the course in this GoPro course preview. Hey guys, my name is Sven Torgren. My name is Haley Langland. We're here at Copper Mountain, and here's your due tour. GoPro course preview. Let's get it. When I rolled up to the park today, first thing is like a really dramatic rail line. There's a lot going on. There's some um, different options in the beginning, a down bar, flat down, kind of a cannon into a quarter pipe. There's a rainbow rail. There's kind of a butter box. And then that goes into a triple line. Solid looking park jumps. Yee! One of the key things that I've seen in this course is the first rail feature. It has this rail into a quarter pipe landing, which I've never seen before in a slope style course. I think that the snowboard slope style course designed to progressing slope style is everything. Because I love showing up to a slope style course and having my mind be like, wow, I have no clue what to do on this. It's about having fun and riding your best and just not getting too attached to like winning or the result, but more so just trying to ride good and enjoy the whole experience. It's always good when you have Olympic gold medals give you the GoPro course preview, and it is a thing of beauty, Todd. The option, the word of the day has got to be options mm -hmm. because there are so many different lines to take. When Red Gerard rolls up and says, I have no idea what to do here, you know you got something. Yeah, I mean, and it definitely, it, it taps into your creativity. Like, you get used to these same old slope style right. courses, but this really makes you think like Red said, and that's a good thing. You want to you want to see people outside their comfort zones. There are the numbers you need to know, 12,000 plus feet above sea levels the top of Copper Mountain dropping down to the base which still sits at 9,000 so make sure you got your oxygen as we get set to roll here slope style four chip features three jump features and again options are a plenty there's so many different lines as Jamie Anderson said so everyone I, I doubt we will see the same run twice well let's hope so but there's a lot there's you know what happens is people start to gravitate towards one line because right. it sets you up better for the next line I'm really anxious to see uh, that round bar feature, the big cannon feature into the quarter pipe. I think that's really cool and inventive. There's also that gap up into a wall ride. I saw Brock Crouch yeah. getting a nice lip slide on that the other day. So there's definitely a lot of options. And then into this big 
three pack Oof. of jumps. And they are no joke. <laughs> they are no joke, indeed. Framed against the Rocky Mountains, and they even look big. So you can see just how much snow on the side of the course there, and that third jump on the bottom. You can see so much powder. That's what it was yesterday, and then some. Yeah. That has actually been compressed down just a little bit. As Todd mentioned, clear skies for today. You see the clouds rolling in for the yeah. storm that's supposed to come in tonight and drop maybe another three or four inches. But right now, we are good to go, clear for takeoff. And this course is different in the sense, Todd, that it's farther up the mountain. Usually it finishes at the base. Mm -hmm. so the fans will all be around. You're kind of on your own out there. There's camera people and staff people out there, but you really, once you're on course, it's all yours. That's true. So we are set to go. This will be the men's snowboard slope style final. No animal was injured in making the outfit for Torgier Bergram, but he does love himself some white tiger. He's his. He's a zebra. <laughs> That's what they call that outfit. So he's taking a look at it, thinking about where he's going to go, the 28-year-old from Oslo, Norway. Uh, when you say Norway, you say snowboarding. I have never met a bad snowboarder from Norway. So here we go. go. Torgir getting ready to drop into this course. It's all about camaraderie up there. Now this first... Rail, there's four different rail features, and you can see when you look down, this is a smattering yeah. of rail. So you see right there, straight into the quarter pipe off that round bar. Torgiro will give us a good show through of what is possible up here on the rails and just how it's laid out. And Todd, we'll probably see things change, obviously, from the first and second run. Yeah, I would think so a little bit, but not too, too much. You want to, I mean, you only have two shots yeah. at this. So you, once you lock in your run, you just want to make it better and better. Come in oh, here. That arches. is the patented. <laughs> Torgier switch backside five with a late method. Making it look really good. That speed, definitely an issue. He's got power tuck going here, coming into the oh, low. Oh, that's bail. it. Knuckle chucker on the bottom jump. Okay, so what that tells me is that speed is definitely the competitor that you need to beat today. So he was good on the first two kickers. The third one, though, was not feeling the speed to clear it. You do not want to come up short on these jumps. They are no joke. Yeah, his rail section up top was really strong. You know, as, as far as fanning out on the tricks that happened, his first jump, yeah. the switch backside five, late boned out method, that is insane. I would like to see more of that in snowboarding, less whirling. <laughs> Less, uh, less flying through the air in great poses. Less I mean, more triples. of that. More flying through the air in great poses. Less flipping flying meatballs. All right, so Torgir up top on the rails looking good. But watch this as he just brings it into the tuck here. Look at him ratcheting down a little extra there. And this was the setup. Look at that. Just locked Full in. Full lock in. Pops out. Lands backwards. Watch the lock out of the body. The shoulders are already twisted. It's that late 180, and that brings him into that beautiful switch back five with the late method that we will not be seeing. <laughs> so Torgir skipping the final feature because of speed, and it's a 51.66. All things considered, that's pretty good because he did meet, miss a whole feature. Hey, he's still standing. Yeah. You don't want to come up short on that bottom jump. Did you hear what he just said there? He said, guys, it is so slow. So that's going to be relayed back up to the top. And people, as Todd, as I mentioned, they may have to change things up from run one to two. Torgier certainly is going to. Tip your waxer. Mikey Cicerelli now out of Canada, the 23-year-old. Goofy footer. So he'll come into this one starting off switch. Cicerelli looking good. First rail. Nice 270 on. Nice overturn. So Mikey Cicerelli looking good. He's got one more rail feature to navigate up here. Carrying good speed. Mikey's board doesn't look very slow. Now he's going to just straight nice. 450 Look at that. off. Into look a at tuck. Stay low. Getting a nice 900 around. Staying low. It's all about carrying that speed through the first and second jump. Mike looking solid though. Yeah, he is. Making short work of the three jumps. Plenty of speed wow. on the last one. Nice work from Mikey Cicerelli. So the Canadian having no issues, possibly getting some information that Torgier Bergram having some issues on speed. He went straight line, no speed checks at all between those jumps and the first rail. Yeah, and also he carried a lot of speed through the yep. upper rail section as well. 
you know, maybe opting for that just to make sure that you have enough momentum to propel you through those bottom three jumps. Watch right here. Comes off 450, 450 degrees of rotation, and then straight into the power tuck. There's that rainbow rail. And there's a little small gap into the flat bar after the rainbow rail. And here's the above shot. Snapping into the rotations. The 900. It's two and a half. Straight into that. And then the bottom jump, all about the style. Snaps in it, gets that grab, holds on the yeah. entire way around. Look how long he holds this grab for. Grabs Melon. That's the front hand right behind the front binding. And stays locked in that position all the way through the rotation. And lands in the sweet spot. Cicerelli's going to be happy with that one. Especially considering the lack of speed that looks like is happening out there. And 80 is going to help his cause, no question about it. So something to build on for Mikey Cicerelli of Canada. First run, he's got one more to go. They call him the Fridge. This is Frieshoff Tischendorf of Norway, 22 years of age out of Oslo. And Todd, he is kind of not blown up really at contests, but his post on Instagram and such, his social media following because of one piece of equipment, the backpack. The backpack. What is in Fridge's backpack? <laughs> Will anyone ever find out? Fridge with a very unique line in. Nice I mean, I work. I, I gotta think when you're spinning as much as these guys are, that's gotta be just otters. Are you just so used to it now? I don't know, but it just fridge is absolutely perfect on the rails. He's one of the riders' favorite riders to yeah. watch. He does some crazy stuff. Always looking like he's just coming off the hill. Big double. double. Oh, that was such a smooth touchdown. Wow. Fridge winding up. Casual backside 1080. And then in here to the bottom jump. Oh. Big double cork 10, tail grab. Fridge looking good. I, you know, maybe he's got a little extra weight in that backpack to get him get him in through the flats. Fridge with a double cork 10 on that last hit with the backpack. I don't know if he's got a six pack of dew in there or what, but it's just such an odd thing that it's flopping around when he's out spinning. I guarantee you I would not want to land on a six pack of dew in my back. Get yourself a little spine bruise. Whoa, but look at, look, he's almost sandbagging himself yeah. in, the, uh, like, in the other way. Like, yeah, I'm going to handicap myself as I come in here because that backpack is all over it's the place. It's everywhere. It's shifting from left to right, but he don't care. Bridge is making short work of these rail sections. Very smooth, and I like the way he came into those rails as well and then straight up into the double up and over. The double heave-ho. But this right here, the double... Double cork tail grab, dipping that front shoulder two times, holding the tail grab all the way through. With the backpack, right and high. With the backpack. He's happy with that one. <laughs> Frieshoff Tischendorf waiting for his score to drop down. Always a smile on his face. The Norwegian looking to better. Mikey Cicerelli's 80, and it's going to be a 72, which will slot him into second place. Into that second spot with Torger in the number three spot as we move along now. American Kyle Mack. Out of West Bloomfield, Michigan, 22 years of age, been around the game for some time, even though he's only 22 tied. Kind of a big air specialist, and we'll see how he fares in this rail section and then into the three kickers. You can see right there the above view of the angle of that flat bar into the quarter pipe feature. It's interesting the way they have this whole thing set up, and I can understand how you roll into it and you're like, where, where am I supposed to go? There's just way too many options here. But it's great because it gives, a, gives these guys a chance to become really creative. And the judges do reward. If you take a non-traditional line through these rails and you don't go just, you know, the obvious straight through, right? judges do reward that. So Kyle Mack trying to keep that speed up. Coming Ooh. up a little bit short on that knuckle. Not enough speed. So this will be a throwaway run for Kyle Mack as he skips that final feature. Yep, and the pressure is on for Boy, run Todd, number so two. It really, it, your speed is going to start after you go yeah, off that last rail feature. You better make you sure to that you are dialed in and yeah. yeah. point. Back to You've got to be squared up there. with that first jump. jump. That first jump is going to set your pace. See Kyle Mack here. Full commitment to that rail. Comes off a little bit early, but it was really about the jumps. You see this right here. Just not able to land in the sweet spot with full base down. And then Kyle tries to get it done. But coming up a little short right on that double court 1080, unfortunately. So 
Kyle Mack. Backside double court 1080 with the melon grab comes up about two bucks short of making it to the actual landing. A lot of pressure for run number two. Yeah, 25, that'll be his throw away. He'll look to run two. Talking about some of the young and up and comers. Luke Winkleman certainly fits that bill. 19 years of age out of the snowboarding hotbed of Blowing Rock, North Carolina. Last two months, though, Todd, his suitcase has been his best friend as he has traveled around the world, some of the biggest events in Locks and Sicerom, Italy. And we saw him recently in Mammoth Mountain. So here he is now at Dew Tour 2020. I mean, some of the landings of these jumps have about the same vertical as he did growing up at home. Yeah. These small resorts now are producing some of the best rail riders on the planet. Think about... Uh, Ooh, Whoa! Coming off a little early for Winkleman right there. Just to finish that thought, you know, Zeb Powell coming out of the same place that he did. You don't think of the Carolinas as being no. a, a hotbed for snowboarding at all, but they do have mountains, and as long as there's jumps and rails, you can True. produce amazing snowboarders. So Winkleman on his third and final hit. Todd, I gotta give him credit for a massive salvage yeah. job because that rail, that could have been disastrous. And it really shows you that you have to be so perfect, not only for the judges, but in order to keep your speed up and maintain your line. There's his dad, Eric, down there at the bottom of the pipe. Unfortunately, not able to have a perfect, complete run. Wow, run number two. He just got spit off that rail. Uh, off there in There's a look, aerial view of the course here at Copper Mountain. The folks at SPT and Woodward doing a fantastic job of giving these athletes something to think about. Here we go with Luke right here. That little drop down pops off, a little tap out. That right there, little tap 180. Those are the little things the judges have to take into consideration. And that maybe can differentiate you from the rest of the field. On his jumps, it's really between that first and the second jump where all that speed just gets siphoned away. A little oh. bit short on the last jump. There's nothing worse than having a perfect slope style course laid out in front of you, and it really comes down to speed. Just, it's, you know how to do it. It's just Mother Nature's not allowing you to perform at your best. 25-6-6, Luke Winkleman, also one of the athletes that will be looking to run number two. There's the start house, there's the first feature. There are all the options that await our next athlete from Blowing Rock, North Carolina, the hotbed of snowboarding, to Haiku, Hawaii. This is Lion Farrell. Talk about a kid that has mastered boards of all sizes and shapes. He's a fantastic surfer, skater, and you know what? Why not spin over to the mainland and get the snow a try? I've known Lion since he was just a, basically a baby. And they used to go and spend a lot of time in New Zealand during the summers. Their grandparents lived there, yeah. Yeah, they would make it basically a, a year-round perpetual winter, as you can see from above. Mm. Oh, yeah, unfortunately issues. for Lion, just kind of off of his line. There's that little butter box feature. That rail sets you on top of the butter box. You have a, uh, an opportunity to do a trick on and off there. So this will be a throwaway for Lion as he's just trying to milk some speed to get a, a taste of what he'll need for run number two. It's a straight air, and he's still just clearing the knuckle. That's right. You just see, it's it's so critical. Nice front side 360. Todd, it seems like it's the first and third. The second one doesn't seem to be giving people problems. It's the first and this third one. If you don't have maximum speed, you're going to be in trouble. Yeah, it's all Man, it really comes down to who's your wax tech. Did you wax correctly? And the temperatures are kind of all over the place. Yesterday, I mean, it wasn't too cool, no. but but as as it cleared up last night and really kind of sucked some of the moisture out of the snow, it's really dried it out. The snow got a lot colder, and it definitely changed up what you needed to prepare your base of your snowboard with. So right now, it's Mikey Cicerelli that leads the way with an 80. The fridge sits in second with a 72, and Torger Bergen, the first man to drop in, who missed the third and final feature, is sitting in third place with a 51.66. So everyone seems to be kind of figuring things out. As Todd pointed out, Wax is a huge issue right now. Brock Crouch, the next man to drop in from Todd's neck of the woods down in Carlsbad, California, just 20 years of age. And sure. I look to guys like Brock Crouch and the next guy, Judd Hankies, to figure this out because these guys are just perpetually in parks and they find ways to milk speed when there's no one else is finding it. Brock popping off that round bar into a bit of an alley-oop, backside 360. Coming in fast. Brock looking good up top. There's the rainbow rail. Now this will be the big determining factor. Is he going to have enough speed carried through as he frontside 360s off of that wow. rail? 
Is he going to have enough speed for this first hit? You see him correcting his line. Big front side 900. This Just one. kind of pumping it there. Another 900. Wow, so beautiful. Sip, kind of a safety run. Two back-to-back -back 900s. Brock is capable of much more. And a big double court 10. Nice and clean from top to bottom. Good strategy for Brock. He's probably considering how little speed there is to right. be had on this course. Just putting down a run, being smart. Todd, would you say that's better than 80, though? That would put him into first. Uh, it may be, just because of the way that he handled these rails up top. It's such good speed management on his part. Look at that. He kind of gapped up and over that yep. rainbow rail and just caught the other half. And here we see frontside 50-50 pop off. Look how he landed right into a tuck. Yeah, lands in a solid tuck. He's becoming quite the smart competitor. Brock is, uh, he's competed at a very high level in surfing as well. He knows strategy. You wouldn't know it though by talking to him in the lodge, but Brock, Brock knows strategy. 64-6-6 is what the judges give Brock Crouch. Wow. Seems a little low, that but that a, puts him in the third. That's a really, really low score for that, that run. I was thinking. Super low. All right, this is Judd Hankey's 18 out of La Jolla, California. Todd, we like to refer to him as Lord of the Boards because he's fantastic on a surfboard, amazing on a skateboard, and not too shabby on a snowboard. And he just seems not a big guy, but he seems to find a way to create velocity and momentum. And he just seems to, like no other athlete I've seen on the slope style course before, he'll come off rails and be able to milk speed. Yeah, John's a powerhouse. Here we go. You can see right here, there's that flat bar rotating 270 into the quarter pipe feature. Popping off 270 again. And you can see how tightly packed these rail features are. There's not a lot of time to think in between. Oh, Ooh. Judd, nice save. 270 up and over the rainbow. Now for the tuck. Coming in. Just a 540 yep. knuckling for Judd. So it really comes down to how you leave that feature. Yep. We talked about leaving the rail feature in a good place. And Judd Hankey's had him some issues there, but look at this, winds up and lays it down beautifully on that third and final feature. Where he found the speed for that, I do not know. Shape of things to come on run number two. Beautiful 1080 with the tail grab, dipping that shoulder two times. But it was just that little squeak off of speed up top that cost him basically a clean line through. Now technically he didn't fall. Look at this right here, 270 up and over the rainbow. He's on it, comes off, right there. and just somehow power squats out of that. That was a great save. Right, pops off. You need to land kind of high on that yeah. knuckle right there to be able to keep that speed up. 540 comes around, lands on top of that one. This isn't going to be a very high score for Judd. But it was all about that third jump for oh me. Oh my gosh. Adding a, a lot more style into it than just the typical grab mute and start flipping your body through the air. Once you start grabbing your tip and tail, it slows down your rotation. Judd getting that tail grab on the second portion of that, but still almost coming up short. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so. Speed like it's going to be an issue today for those guys out on the course. And it's a 57 6, 6, 6, 6 for the American. For Judd Hankus. So halfway through the field the of 17 up top. in the two-run format right here at Copper Mountain. Next up, it'll be Yuki Dono of Japan, the 23-year-old set to drop in. Still, an 80 leads the way with Mikey Cicerelli. Cicerelli was the second man to drop in, Todd, and you would think the word would be transferred up top. To, hey, it's a slow course. Keep your speed. Keep your speed. Well, Everyone they know. knows it. They just aren't able to get it done yet. You know, it just kind of depends on um, where you land on some of the, the last rail feature. It will kind of set your momentum. If, if you were smart, you take a rather pedestrian trick and just kind of uh, maybe even a 50 50 off, no trick, just to yeah. keep up if you've got big big uh, jump moves. Yuki Kadona, master on the rails. Yuki's also one of these riders that once he starts flipping through the air, <laughs> you never know what's going to happen. He was the first person to unleash really the 1620 into snowboarding. When you were competing, did no. you ever think a 1620 was going to be on the table? No. That's usually how much lunch cost for four people <laughs> back when I was competing. Here we go. Yuki into the first jump. 1080, holding on to it, trying to keep that speed up. There's a wind up. 
Clears it. Switch back 12. Into the bottom jump, trying to keep his speed. Double oh. court 1080 and almost. And he saw it. Wow. Toddy was pumping for speed on that third and final hit, and Yuki couldn't find it. Oh, unfortunately for Yuki Kodono, he had such a good run going. Not able to put it down. So Kodono, the ninth man of 17 here in the slope style final that has still been unable to solve the conundrum that is this course and finding speed for the kickers. There he is under the butter box. Switch backside 180 out. You see here's the 270 on. Popping off and that set him up for that first jump. So straight into a switch 1080. Just a little hand drag after that tail grab. And switch backside 1260 for his second jump. And I thought he had it. I thought he was landing high enough up there for this ah. bottom jump. But unfortunately, Yuki Kodono coming up just a little bit short on that third and final jump. So he hits the knuckle, lands flat, and then gets bucked into the back seat. And could have been a lot worse. Yeah, exactly. To be honest, I think if. Uh, you know, when you land on top of the knuckle like that, that's a lot of momentum coming down. You can really get, I got actually destroyed a couple of years back. I mean, like 10 years ago, blew my arm into a million pieces on a similar slam to that. So they can go really wrong. Yuki Kidona gets a 46-3-3 on his first offering. Talk about a fan favorite and writer's favorite. This is Reni Rinikangas from Finland. If you could bottle what Renny Renikongas <laughs> has, whatever he's you would, you would out energy drink all the energy drink sponsors. Where is he going? Oh Look my gosh. This. Rene with a completely unique line. Miller flip on the quarter pipe. How did the judges even comprehend what's going on here? We're talking Chris Miller at the Dew Tour in snow. Actually, no. That was Daryl Miller. Chris <laughs> Miller is not responsible for the Miller flip. That was Daryl Miller. Oh. Backside lip slide to Fakie on the wall ride. Holy macaroni. <laughs> is he talking? He's talking He's to just the got cameraman as he goes he down. Goes. Here he goes. Trying to stay on his feet. Just dreaming of sauna because all Finnish riders, they, they look for sauna, sauna. After, after run. Of course. You for, you for sauna. Here he goes. Bottom hit. Double and Big up. double back <laughs> rodeo. Perfect landing. Switch double back rodeo, holy cow. So how does he find the speed? He starts off with a Euro carve into the into the Miller trick, not Chris Miller, not Chris and then Miller. he ends up with a double huck at the bottom. Wait, was that switch backside? No, he's uh, he's regular foot. So check this out, ops around this, power carves <laughs> back up the hill, Miller flip, Miller flip, front side invert, comes around, lands fakey, and as I was saying, that was Daryl Miller that invented the frontside Miller flip. The original DC. The original, yeah. And then right here, 270 off. And watch, just tries to keep that speed up. Gaps up and into a backside lip slide. Wow. Comes off fakie. Lands backwards. And then, still going. This is when he talked to the cameraman. He's all, whoa! <laughs> Almost comes up short on the 270 off and then played it pretty smart. I mean, he is capable of so much more on jumps, but he just wanted to land and keep his speed up, basically for this right here. Big up and over, double backside rodeo. Look at that, spotting the landing already. Oh, oh was there 180. Switch double backside rodeo to end off that run. What do wow. you think, better than an 80? I think that it's, it's gonna be up there. That was a solid run. And it's a 76, so Rene Rinakangas of Finland goes into second place. So judges dinging him a little bit, you know. Now you see the current standings. Mikey Cicerelli still yeah, leading the way the with an 80. Messing up on the rail is really, if he hadn't had that on the run, you'd have to. Sven Dorger now will take his crack at it, the 25-year-old out of Stockholm. The covenant is so hot. And he's going to get the follow cam treatment. Sven Torgren, very strong rider out of Sweden. Following in the footsteps of such incredible Swedish riders as Ingemar Bachmann and Johan Olofsson. Legends in this sport. Switch frontside board slide. You can see how the combos play out on that butterbox feature. I do like this follow cam. I wonder how Sven feels about it. 
450 off. Now the power tuck. Comes off his heels. Oh! Snaps through that. And then straight up and over. Nice double cork front side 1080. Clean. Putting together a nice clean yeah, he run here. Sven. Plenty of Nicely speed. Nicely done. That is how you do it. Good strategy for him as well. Keeping a lot of momentum going into those jump features. Ah. Sven Torgren. A lot of style coming from the Swedish rider. And the big question is, is it enough to move him into first place in an 80? For my vote, I'd say yes. I like the butter box. You can see the combos go down, 180 out, switch backside, 180 off. That's fun. I like those features in snowboard parks, too. It kind of kind of keeps you thinking. And here as he snaps into double cork, front side, 1080, grabs slob, front hand in between the front bindings. And then grabs crazy stale fish on this. Comes around, backside 1080. Very nice. So Sven looking for a score, and it's an 88. Wow. Synth Organ goes into first. That was a random run. Switch it up. The Congress is going to fall down to three. Everyone shuffles down. So Sven sits atop the board with an 88. Mikey Cicerelli sits in second, and Renny Renekongas sitting in third. Truly an international podium right now with Sweden, Canada, and Finland. That takes us to Mark McMorris of Canada, four-time Dew Tour champion, 2018 Olympic bronze medalist. Round bar, 270 off into that quarter pipe feature. Mark packing it in. Such an accomplished yeah. rider. It's Mark, you can just tell he's got so much style. And his real... Oh! oh! Mick Morris, I thought that was going south. And ends up just corking a 450 off. Big 540 right there. Let's see if he can possibly whip himself into a frenzy down here off these jumps. Coming in off his heels. Boom. Triple cork. Wow. Front side, 1440. The first person we've seen down throw down a triple today. McMorris does it with style, front side. So the question is, Todd, did he have to change things up because of a speed issue on the jumps? Mark is an incredibly savvy competitor. Lots of smarts going in there. That inverted, that corked right. out spin, the 450 off of that uh, round bar. That's going to give him some points. Yep. He did just do basically a basic 540 in his run. I believe it was a 540. I didn't right see here. the takeoff. But here's the butter box combos. Switch, 270, uh, switch 360 off of that butter box. And then really watch this right here. Comes in, 270 on. Basically slips himself off into an inverted corked out move. Sets himself up switch. And this was, I think he just did a... Uh, you know, basically a 540, then moved into a double cork 1080, and then into a triple dip of the front shoulder. Count Full em. commitment, one dip, two dips. Now watch the third, the head initiates it. You can just see the head moving around to make sure he comes around fully. McMorris, he will move into the lead with this run for sure, just by virtue of how technical some of those rail tricks were, and the big triple. No one's even stepped to that yet in this final. So McMorris feeling it there, and the score comes in. It's a 90.33, so Mark McMorris takes the lead. Yeah, that'll work. So the Canadian now takes the lead away from Sweden's Sven Thorgren. Mikey Cicerelli sitting in third. The Canadians now holding down first and third. The next up title will be Max Perot, and what a story he has been. Max Perot, the 24-year-old from Vermont. He has been through so much. A 2017 Dew Cup champion, 2018 Olympic silver medalist, and it has been a long road to get him back up and riding and healthy to the 2020 Dew Tour. And just when you think the scores couldn't go any higher, enter Max Perot of Canada. Hey, what's up? I'm Max Perot. I'm a professional snowboarder, and I've been snowboarding professionally for the past eight years. 
So exactly a year ago, I was diagnosed with a Hodgkin lymphoma and I had to miss out on my whole season. I've never missed a single contest in my career and now I had to miss a whole season. For me, it was not an option of not winning against cancer. Every time you get a chemotherapy, you get really sick. You get nausea, you vomit for a couple days. At the end of my 12 treatment, it showed that the cancer was 100% gone. Being a competitive person for the past years definitely helped me battle uh, cancer. It was kind of another competition, just a, a much more bigger one, and a one that I had to win. I'm really excited to be here at Due Tour uh, this year, especially since I missed it last year. And now here I am back uh, in a new venue in Copper with, with a really nice slopestyle course, and it will mean a lot for me to do well over here. Already a winner, Maxence Perot, cancer survivor, set to drop back into competition, Todd, and I think the entire snowboarding, sporting world community was pulling for him. I can't, I mean, it's it's unbelievable what he's been through, and yep. to come back from that and come back so strong. He's already won a couple big air events fairly recently, and Max is just the ultimate competitor. So he comes off the heels of Mark McMorris just laying down the first 90 of the competition, a 90.33. So already for Max's first run here, remember they get two runs. Max a little bit of a problem up top, switch backside lip slide. There's the butter box combos. So right now he's coming in switch, switch 270 on. So that means this jump, he's gonna have to carry a lot of speed. Max winding up. Switch, double backflip. Right in here. Max trying to keep this speed alive. Now this is a fairly pedestrian run for Max Perot. As, oh my gosh, that is a textbook example of what can happen when you come up short. Max hit so hard, you saw how far oh. he bounced down that landing. The board says no bad day, but that was a start to a bad day. He took a heavy fall. Todd landing completely flat, coming up short on the knuckle and just gets bucked. Wow. That, Unbelievable he's riding away. Jeez. Thanks. Oh. Lucky stars for this snow being just a, oh. a little bit soft. Just gave him a little bit of a cushion, but he probably cleared about 30 feet after that bounce off of the knuckle. Long enough to be like, I've been in the air a long time before I'm slamming. And not in a good place. And that was a fully committed double cork move coming around blind. All the faith is that you're just going to put the oh. landing gear down. Here we go, up in the butter box feature here. Things were looking solid up top. He had one small bobble yep. at the very beginning of his run. You can just see how confident he is. And then here is that big, uh, actually just a double landing. backflip. Actually, I called that a switch double backflip. This is a double backflip and then trying to keep as much speed as he can. There's that double back up and over. Things were working, yep. things were working out good. But I kind of could tell he was just a little off, maybe off his game, he came off the first rail, but watch where he comes around on this front double court 10. Boom, oh. right on top. Now there is where he just gets the oh. ejection. Not really knowing when you're gonna hit, clearing so much. But luckily, you can see that snow poofing up right there. It is rather soft. That probably saved him yep. from some heavy bruising from that slam. Oh, my. Max Sense Perot of Canada taking the heaviest fall we've seen so far today in any competition. Here it is one more time. Boom. Ooh, it's a long way down. But if there's anyone I know that can come back yeah. when it's all on the line, Max Bro gets one more shot at this. We know what he's capable of. He knows now where the speed is at. I look for him to clean that up, and Max is still going to be one to push to the top of the podium. Down to the final four athletes here in the first run of the men's slope style final. And this is a good one, another Norwegian crusher, Mons Roisland. Mons is such a powerhouse rider. Strong Norwegian rider. Look at the combo right there. Nice. And we into up and over that half rainbow. 
carrying a lot of speed, 450 out. Giving the judges something to think about early and often here. Look at this. Tail press, Nolly front flip off. Max's board seems to be, I mean, excuse me. Mons. Mons's board, se board seems to be running r oh. Oh, really fast as he tries oh. to pop off of that. That'll do it, Todd. Unbelievable. Uh. Maybe the best rail section we've seen so far. I will say this, though. His board does seem to be cooking down this hill. <laughs> you talking some Norwegian wax? I don't know what it is. Unfortunately, I mean, man. Oh, what One, could have been? What could have been? Basically using that rail as a, a jump to project him into a frontside 720. Oh. Uh, un unfortunately for Mons, so welcome, run number two will be a pressure cooker, yep. but we can see what he's going to bring to the plate here. 23-year-old out of Oslo, Norway, will have to look to the second and final run here in the men's slope style final, where Mark McMorris leads the way by a large margin, a 90.33. Sven Thorgren in second with an 88, and then Mikey Cicerelli of Canada also on the podium right now with an 80. So look back up top. That big pop out, so much strength. It takes a lot to make yourself project. Watch this right here. Tail press, pop out. To manual tail press, to nolly front flip off of that. That was a unique interpretation of that line up top. That's what you got to do. Keep the judges happy. Here's where the problem is. See right here. Goes into basically a board slide. Puts all that weight there. Snaps up and off. Look at just the full commitment of the body, but not able to bring it around clean. Comes up just a little bit short on that rotation. And that would be it for his clean first run. You got to land that rail feature perfect in order to keep your speed up for the jumps. Final three athletes to go. Mark McMorris leading the way, setting the mark with a 90.33. It'll be Darcy Sharp, Red Gerard, and Stolly Sonback. The final three. Interesting note, Darcy Sharp's sister, Cassie, already a winner at the Dew Tour, as she won Ski Modified Superpipe earlier today. A lot of talent yeah. in this Canadian family. 23-year-old out of Whistler, now on course. Darcy Sharp, 50-50, backside 180 in there. Darcy looking good so far. Little no slide, backside 180 out. Oh, look at this unique line right here. Here we go. That is, that's the way you kind of just roll through and interpret it your own way. Judges definitely pay attention to that. Setting himself up for this first jump. There's the power tuck. Switch backside 1260. And setting his edge here. Dipping that shoulder two times. Backside double cork 1080. And as much speed as he can possibly muster into this final jump. Big double cork 10. Lots of power. I think that's a top three run. Will it be enough to take down McMorris? I think he's going to sandwich himself right under Mark McMorris. That's my gut instinct right now. So to get on the podium, he needs better than an 80. To move into second place, he needs an 89. I like this right here. Ops out of that round bar, then jumps up and over, catches the last part of that flat bar. And that's, that's his interpretation of that line. They go and do all that work to create all these great rail features. You know, even the people that create the courses, they want to see you utilize that and create a perfect, you know, creative line through there. Darcy looking good on these jumps too, landing in all the sweet spots, making sure that his speed counted. Look how quiet he's in the air. Comes around on that front side double cork 10. So Darcy Sharp, happy with that one, giving himself a little uh, clap claim. Fifth score, 73-66, so the Canadian I slides down don't agree just with that ahead one. of Fridge, and so Fridge will bump down to six as Darcy Sharp finds himself in the top five. Mark McMorris still on top with a 90.33. We're in the midst of the first runs of two in the men's snowboard slope style final here at beautiful Copper Mountain on a beautiful Saturday afternoon. It'll be the Olympic gold medalist, the reigning Olympic gold medalist, Red Gerard, coming off that bronze medal performance in Aspen where many people thought maybe that should have been a different color medal for Red. He's all good though. Just keep on riding. So Gerard will go and then it'll be Stolly Sonback, the last man to drop in by way of winning last year's competition. Here we go, as Red drops in, we're gonna ride along with him. Big alley 360 into the shark fin, or the quarter pipe. 
switch back to 70 coming out. No, no, he comes into this feature right here. He's going to have a cork move here. Also dumps it off of there into a cork 540 off of the end, or cork 450 off the end of it. Into a front side 1080 tail grab. Red trying to keep this up, keep the momentum here. Backside 1260. Setting up here for switch backside. Into a big switch backside double cork 1080. Todd, his landings are so precise and smooth. Hardly any snow kicks up as he just sets the board down so smoothly. Yeah, Red's a cat when it comes to landing. He can set those board into the landing so smoothly, no matter how he is in the air. He always seems to be able to put the board down perfect. Kind of got the job done. Backside 12 into a switch backside double cork 1080. Switch back 270 to come out forward. That's super hard to stop that momentum on the rail. Popping out into the butter box. Switch back 270 off of that. So red. A lot of good combos up top. And watch this right here. Sets himself up. There's that switch back 270 coming out forward, as I said. And then here's that round bar. Dumping himself into a cork 450 off. Essentially using that rail to set himself up for this right here and able to just barely squeak by the switch double cork 10 at the bottom. Will it be enough to overtake Canada's Mark McMorris? A 90.33, wow. and it's a 93, so Red Gerard is the new leader. What do you think puts him above wow. Mark McMorris? A little I mean, shocked at that. Like do, you, do you think they were a little generous? I think he got juiced a little points for the cork 450 off of that up top. I do. I still think with McMorris, without any speed being available in this course, to throw down a triple court 1440 is definitely. But uh, actually, you know what? No, McMorris did do a 540 in his run. Right. Okay, I take that back. I see where there's there's been a little bit left on the table for McMorris to make up. Red was probably a little more complete. You're saying in the jump section. That's right. So Red Gerard, a 93. Let's look at these jumps again. Okay, so he starts things off. Back 12, 60. Landing. I mean, like nothing. It's great. Into the switch backside double cork 10. This is the final jump. Double corks it. Maybe he wanted the 12, but the speed just wasn't there. As he dips his shoulder two times. Nice save. Yep. Usually he does switch backside double cork 1260s into sleep, but just didn't he knew that he didn't have enough speed. He'll take a switch backside double cork 10 to put him into the lead. So what that does in the two-run format is Red Gerard has one more run and everyone's now chasing him with a 93 and top. That is a big score with a course like this. We turn our attention to the final man to drop in, 26-year-old Stali Sandbeck out of Norway, the due tour champion from 2018, back to defend his title, and he will have the difficult chore of following Red Gerard in that 93. I'll tell you what, Stale absolutely in the team competition here at Dutour yeah. <laughs> destroyed this upper section. Getting it done for Team Oakley. Look at that. Backside lip slide popping out the opposite way into that quarter pipe. Super technical already up top. Very similar to what he was bringing in the team competition. This will be a big lip slide. Whoa, 270 out on that. Stale is not playing around on the rails. <laughs> wow, just a weird little line. hand drag. Stale flat spinning, landing up high. Will he have enough speed for the second jump? 900, flat spinning. That's Stale's signature move. He typically doesn't dip his shoulder as much as some of the other riders, wow. but lands That's so clean. smooth. Yeah. So, in my opinion, Stale has had the most technical yep. upper section of rails so far out of anyone. Do you think the flat spin it's harder. goes it's, higher with the judges? It's way harder because when you start corking things, you can actually kind of cheat the spin by dropping that Dip front the shoulder. shoulder. Yeah. When you're flat spinning, you're really using your edge and body momentum to snap you through that rotation. Look at this right here. Gap up and out to lip slide. Pop off 270. Nice for Stale. Look at the folks in the chairlift getting a beautiful view of Stale going large on that Woodward box. Oh, that was so clean. And watch right here. This is the hand drag. Look at that. Knuckle hop hand dragger. 
big up and over inverted 360 with the hand drag. Here's another shot of it right here. That's the old uh, pick up your car keys you just dropped. <laughs> and that set him up here as he tried to milk as much speed as he could. 1260 up top. And comes in off his heels. 900. And then into a flat spin 1080. Here's another look at that nine. Gets the indie grab. Holds it basically through the entire rotation. Now watch how his body doesn't cork. He doesn't drop that shoulder. Stays basically upright. Definitely drives his front shoulder into the rotation as much as he possibly can. But still, really difficult to keep your spin going when you're not dropping that shoulder into corks. Stalin San back, Red Gerard is right. Red's giving it to him. It's a 91-3-3. So Stalli and Red so close, figuratively and mathematically, a 93 and a 91 with Mark McHorris in third. Those three into the 90s. Good times being had by all. For more on the athletes, let's sit it down to Tina Dixon. Yeah, celebrating. Uh, they still have one more run, but right now, Red, you have that lead with the 93. Um, what is your impressions of that score? Yeah, I mean, I don't. It's it's really crazy out here right now. There is some extra snow on the course right now, so it's not riding as fast as we would like it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm just psyched to land my run, and after that, I'm, it's not really up to me. But I'm very excited for sure. Do you have anything left on those uh, jumps? Those bottom three jumps? I don't know. We'll have to see. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe in the run, I'll think of something. I don't know. Oh, there you go. True red style. Thanks, Red. And he's the leader right now. <laughs> From Red's backyard to the top of the podium right now, a 93 has Red Gerard leading ahead of some heavy, heavy hitters. Stolly Sonbach gave it his best with a 91.33, and Mark McMorris sitting in third with a 90.33. And as Tina pointed out, still one more run to go, Todd. What will they come up with next? Well, the pressure is definitely on, and Red showed that, you know, you just have to really be creative with the rails and be smooth on these jumps. I don't know, I, I still think, well, McMorris has left something on the table with that 540. If he can clean that 540 up, turn it into a 900, it's not gonna be so easy for Red to just waltz through here because Mark does have triples, both front side and backside. One more round to go at the men's snowboard slope style final here at the Dew Tour, built by Mountain Dew. We'll have that when we return to Copper Mountain. It's the 2020 Dew Tour from beautiful Copper Mountain, Colorado. Todd Harris, Todd Richards, Tina Dixon with you, and you have tuned in at the perfect time, the second and final runs of the men's snowboard slope style final. 
What we can tell you is local Red Gerard from just down the road in Silverthorne leads the competition with a 93. Stolly Sonback with a super technical first run sits in second with a 91.33. And of course, Mark McMorris, the Canadian Ripper, he sits in third with a 90.33. During that commercial, Todd, though, we were talking about all the talent that is on this board still, and they all had little bobbles here and there. They clean it up. We're going to probably see runs in the 96, 97 range to win this thing. Well, I, I think for sure. I mean, we've got... You know, Max Perot, yep. heavy slam. He's not one to, to be down and out, so he's going to come back hard. Just a lot. There's still a lot of talent to come. Mons Roisland's going to probably do a little bit better. You think of guys like uh, Yuki Kodono, Judd Hankies, Brock Crouch. It's all about how people can manage the speed. Yep. Torgier is on course right now, having some problems with speed on run number one. So he missed the third and final feature because he just didn't have the speed figured out. But the White Tiger out and prowling now. 28-year-old out of Oslo, Norway. Here he comes in, switch backside into this first hit. And there's oh. that. Unbelievable. My vote for best trick that's been done here yet today. Forget all these twirlies. That <laughs> incredible. Oh, and again. Oh, has to revert out. Is he going to clear this oh, one? Oh, mercy. Oh, my gosh. So you see what happens when you jump off something and then flat land and you get bucked into the finish area. Uh, so Torgir having issues again on that third and final feature. But that first jump, oh. that first jump did it for me. Torgir's switch backside 540, regrabs so mountain style. and just kicks it out is unreal. Unfortunately, just going down. But check it out right here, Torgir switch back 270 off. His style is so, he's so good yep. and so strong. I wish that today didn't come down to being like, who can manage the fresh new snow and it would just be a full on battle of tricks. Now watch this as he comes in here. Switch backside spin. Oh, actually, we're not gonna actually see the best trick of his run, but we're gonna end up seeing this right here as he washes out on his heels. And he still went for it. Going for that front side 10 and then right here, just not enough speed. Oh, that hurts. Coming up so short that he ends up just compression popping himself oh. into the flats. Man, I really wanted to see that switch backside five. That was like the best trick that we've seen so far here today as far as style goes. So Torgier's day is done. He will not factor into the podium as we go back to the top. Mikey Cicerelli of Canada, the 23-year-old from Ancaster, led for most of the first run with an 80 until guys like Max Perot and, uh, excuse me, Mark McMorris dropped in the 90 club. Cicerelli, big 270 coming out forward. Once again, hard to stop that momentum from going. Coming off a little ah. bit early on the rainbow to down bar. It. Just leaving a couple points up top. You can really make the judges forget about that bobble if you bring something super heavy to these three jumps. But with the way the speed is right yeah. now, it's just not going to happen. That 180, unfortunately for Cicerelli, he's still in fifth place, though. A top five finish would be great. Big frontside 360. A lot of speed. Todd, that's a precarious fifth place, though. He's sitting on an 80. The names we dropped that had bobbles early. Yeah. Uh, opportunity missed there for Mikey Cicerelli. So close though, he did look so strong up top. He's going to keep the 80 on run number one, so Cicerelli, very respectable top five right now. Cicerelli, like sitting in that top five for the time five. being, but as you're saying, I mean, we've got yeah. so many heavy hitters yeah. that came down and, and really had some big mistakes in their run. And it's just one bobble with a field this deep, 17 of the best. And you have a bobble in a rail section, unless you pull off something just mind bending at the bottom jumps, you're, you're lost. Red Gerard leading the way. This is the fridge. They know. Speaking of mind bending, <laughs> fridge, fridge top Tischendorf from Norway, uh, with the backpack intact. Well, you know, you're always ready to leave. That's what that's what the backpack's all about. I'm, you're always ready to get out of here. Look at that big air to fakie into the quarter pipe. Did he do that in the first run? He did do that in the first run. That looked even bigger. Fridge, you can just hear the ding dongs of hitting these rails just tells you how hard it would be if you just racked your knees against them. It hurts. Here we go. Fridge. Popping up and over 270. Let's see what the backpack can do. Switch oh. back. Double cork 900. <laughs> then into the double cork. Still going. 280. Squeaking it into the landing somehow. 
Bridge coming oh. around, just a little under-rotated on the bottom of the course. Maybe it's a parachute. Self-packed parachute. Oh, so close. The fridge, the legend. Look Tim. at Schindorf out of Norway, just styling some photos. Cook of the day shot right there. Oh yeah, that's it, kick it out. Work it, work it. Get some selfies. So Fridge, unfortunately, but still up top though in the rail section. That was some of my favorite. Little 180 tail press pops out onto the down bar. That rainbow is cool. Look at this right here. Pops big 270 up and over. That's actually more like a 360 off the up flat. Bit of a tail slide up into that pop up and over. Just oh, squeaks it around. Squeak that one. <laughs> Look at that. Look at his head where it's right there. <laughs> Did you see his nose? <laughs> his nose basically clipped Clip. the knuckle. <laughs> and then goes into the backside rotation at the bottom. Are you familiar with the lobster brand? Oh, yeah. That's that's uh, that's Haldor's brand. Lobster. Lobster. Coming out of, uh, well, Iceland, basically. It takes a certain kind of rider to ride for lobster, and Fridge fits the bill. <laughs> 72 on his first run will be his best score of the day for Tischendorf, who sits in eighth. He's not going to beat that 72. He will sit in that eighth position. Look up the course. The sun is still out. Light, not an issue as of yet. The course, the only issue right now, I think the athletes, as Red Gerard pointed out, would be more speed. Gerard, though, not complaining because he got a 93 on run number one. And we are off and running now with Kyle Mack. Kyle Mack keeps it going, trying to fight the Velcro snow that is happening in between the last rail feature and the first jump. He had problems on run number one. Remember Kyle Mack coming home with a medal yep. from the Olympics in big air. big air. Trying to hold on to it, milk the speed. This is his strength once he hits these jumps. 900 off okay, the first. Clean. Trying to milk that speed. Oh, anti-pop oh. off of that jump yep, somehow. Again. Caught that fresh snow and in Max takeoff. And Max's a small dude, so if he can't generate speed. Unfortunately for Kyle, uh, not able to get it together on run one or run two. This over here, I love you guys. So Kyle Mack was trying to build off of something big from run number one because he was sitting on a 25. Remember trying to track down Red Gerard's 93. And again, Todd, it came down to speed. He was pretty good on the first kicker, but it's that second jump that caused him issues. It looked like his toe edge on his board just sank into, sank into the takeoff, basically. You know, as much as, as Snow Park Technologies and the crew here from the Woodward, Park, uh, Woodward Parks, there's only so much they can do. Right. You know, Mother Nature really dealt a hard hand yesterday. As much fun as we had <laughs> riding it, it's really hard to clean off these jumps yep. and make them absolutely perfect. There you see the standings. Red Gerard, Stolly Sonbeck, Mark McMorris, the current podium. Kyle Mack having issues getting himself from top to bottom. Coming off a little bit early. And it was into the jumps here. You can see it's that long flat section between the last rail feature and then when you move into the jumps. 900 and then lands and tries to set in his toe edge coming off of his toes and just not getting Ooh. the projection that he needed off of that jump to clear the knuckle. And that was it. Actually, he uh, the fact that he survived that yeah. coming up that short, that's a win. Todd, is this something that can be adjusted on the fly? I mean, can they bring the landing zone in tighter, or is that just it's just not possible? Well, basically, that would uh, take moving about 60 tons of snow. So no. Short answer, no. So Red Gerard sits on top with a 93. Stolly Sonnenbach sits in second. Mark McMorris in third. And then Sven Thorgren, Mikey Cicerelli rounding out the top five. Remember, there's six Americans in the final. And right now, one of them is leading in Olympic gold medalist Red Gerard. So we take a look at the top of the hill. And while we have just a moment, we're going to get you caught up with the athlete's pers pursuit of excellence here at Copper Mountain Adu Tour 2020. Copper Mountain has a really unique place within action sports these days where they have a very progressive on-hill scene. You've got Danny Davis's Peace Park, you've got the 22-foot deep super pipe that hosts the Grand Prix here every year, and now the Dew Tour. 
And it's no doubt that it's drawn so many professional snowboarders here and skiers because it's really all about progression. It's one of the best parks I've ever ridden and also it's one of my home mountains. I've been coming here since I was just a little tyke. Copper's a lot different. They're so driven by rider feedback. They have so many great facilities here. They have the Woodward Barn. The barn's massive. It's a good place to come train and shred. If you want to come and push yourself to progress and be the best that you can possibly be, places like this and also up on the hill, they're perfect for the athletic pursuit. I wish I had foam pits like 30 years ago. So I think it's pretty great that you can work on your tricks over there and then just transfer it to the mountain. And they just opened Red's Backyard, which I think is probably the coolest aspect of this entire resort. Last year, my mom and I made this like pitch to Copper and Powder Corp to try to make a free hike park at the bottom of their mountains and call it Red's Backyard, and they were down. The terrain around here is just really fun to ride on, like a pow day or, you know, the tree runs. Just all in general, there's so much that Copper has to offer. <laughs> Dew Tour is brought to you by Mountain Dew, Dew the Dew, Toyota, Let's Go Places, O'Neill, Always Summer on the Inside.
You are looking at the start of the slope style course where Red Gerard is the leader with a 93. Stolly Sonbach in second and Mark McMorris currently sitting in third place. Blue skies and the course is running very smooth, but not Todd Richards very fast. And that has been the problem for many athletes. Yep, we don't want to see a waxing contest. Luke Winkleman now dropping in, the 19-year-old from Blowing Rock, North Carolina. Had some issues on his first run, and Winkleman looking to improve upon a 25-6-6. It's going to be hearing a lot from Luke Winkleman in the coming yep. years. He's such a good rider. He's got great style. Snowboarder Mag has him one of the eight up-and-comers to watch, and I would agree with that. Easily. Pops off. Oh, oh no. Luke gets caught by the fresh snow. Snow snake oh, just reached up and grabbed him. Gosh, that is oh, that's so hard to deal with because everything was so on point. He just took it too deep off that rail, was trying to carry all that speed. See what he's doing there, checking the right wing. He came down hard on that right shoulder. Let's look at it again. What a bummer. Here we go. Luke this? pops in, 180. Boom. And I thought he had it. Just a simple 180 out, switch out. 180 out, or back to, back to the oh. 180 out, and then just goes over the nose. piles, landed so far down, they just couldn't handle the compression. You can see how fresh that snow is. Man, rocked. Been there many a time. What a bummer. Unfortunately, Luke Winkleman's day is done, so we keep the youth movement going from Luke Winkleman up to Lion Farrell. And Lion looking also to improve. He he had a real struggle on the first run, having issues in the rails, only picking up an 11.6. Yeah, Lion went down early in run number one, but this kid's got so much talent. It's funny, the next guys that come, these are, they all ride together yeah. all the time. Uh, Lion and Luke and Brock Judd Crouch and Brock, and Judd, all yep. these guys, they just hang together. It's like a little four pack of talent coming up next. Lion much better on this line now. Gap out, that 270 off. Blunt slide 270, and then here we go. Tail slide 450 okay. out. Clean into his, or into his out. tuck. And you can see that wind yes. is blowing uphill now. So not only did you have the problem of the snow being slow, the breeze is starting to go back Ooh. uphill and, and just catches Lion on the knuckle. So, Todd, this is going to force a lot of these guys into changing things up because with that wind blowing, and good on you picking up that flag. But look at that. At the bottom, it's going crosswind, but that first kicker, it's blowing right into their face. Yeah, it's such a weird one here. Colorado is very unique in the way that the weather patterns play out, especially with competition. I mean, you have these days where it seems like at the bottom, yeah. it's, the wind isn't a factor, but just in between, like the first and the second jump, it's blowing uphill. Here we go, Lion just not getting enough trajectory here to make it into the landing. Tries to come around on that, comes up about a buck short on the rotation. Gets cut short because he just doesn't have enough air time to squeak it around. So now, like I said, wind is now becoming a factor. This is Brock Crouch out of Carlsbad, California. Brock had a 64-6-6 on run number one trying to launch himself onto the podium. To do that, he's going to need better than a 90. There go. Nice lip slide to Fakie. 270 on, 270 off. Brock trying to make these combos up top, maximize his scoring potential on the upper rail features. Working this thing like cool borders. Here we go. Brock trying to carry as much speed as he can into this first jump. 900 on the first. Keeping that speed up, coming off his heels. Wow. Cab 1260, Brock trying to put one together here. Coming into the bottom jump. Triple cork 1440, that's the way you get it done. You can see the arms come up. Brock wow. is so stoked that he landed that, wow. And just moments ago, those same flags were howling for Lion Farrell, and Brock Crouch catches a little bit of a window and somehow, I'm so happy. oh my word, what, what a run. Nicely done, Brock. The upper rail section strong, coming into the jumps, also strong to finish things off with the triple court. After run number one having problems, run number two comes through in a clutch. Everything was smooth up top. You saw the combos going down. 
Hops over for that big wall ride feature. Watch this. Blunt slide. You see his shoulders switch. Pops off 270. Nicely done. And then Brock just trying to keep his speed up here. Gets a nice frontside 360 lean grab off of that and then just tries to get into these jumps with as much speed as he can possibly muster. Cap 1260 with the nose grab. Landed that good, he had enough speed. He just committed to this. The triple dip of the shoulder, backside, triple cork, 1440. You see the wind up there, drives that front shoulder down. One, two, squeaks the third one around and rides out of this. Watch the ride out. He's just like, oh my gosh, I did it. <laughs> so good when it's you see like someone he was, happy. He was waiting for the gust of wind to knock him off his line. It never came, so he finds the perfect window, lands it clean, and this should be a great score for him. Brock Crouch! Oh my, oh my gosh! 95-6-6 for Brock Crouch as he goes into the lead. <laughs> First of all, he's happy that he just finished the run on his feet. Then he gets the windbreak, the respite from Mother Nature, and then, Todd, the score, 95-6-6. Holy cow. There are some people going absolutely <laughs> mental in North County, San Diego right now. Let's send it down to Tina. Oh, yeah, and with weather being an issue, speeds, we haven't seen a lot of triple corks. Yeah, Brock Crouch, you just threw down. Uh, walk us through your approach to that final jump. Uh, last run it was pretty slow and I got to the top and Ryan McDermott, I was like, yo, we need some juice this run. I, I was going pretty slow and I luckily got to the third and final jump and my coach was like, if you get to the third jump, go triple. Like, I think you could get a pretty good score. So it happened and this is crazy. Initial reaction to landing that and initial reaction to seeing that giant score. Um, when I landed, I didn't really know what just happened because I haven't done that many spins this whole week. We've had insane snow, and today is a crazy day. I'm so happy. <laughs> what a second run for Brock Crouch, guys. Thank you, Tina. Congratulations, Brock Crouch, on just waking everyone up. We were starting to think that it might be a survival fest, and Brock Crouch comes out and shows us what's available. His coach told him to go for it. He's the one, Todd, that's got to put his life on the line, and he does it and lands it to the tune of a 95-6-6. What you're saying is, is Brock is really open to <laughs> suggestion. Unbelievable. Wow. Glad. I'm very happy for him. <laughs> You know, Brock always seems to be the guy who wins practice and then comes in and just implodes during the event. The but board. he is back on his game. Oh my. So Brock, nice work, Brock Crouch. So stoked. Just a surprise. Everyone, everyone just amped for Brock down. Crouch and what he was down. just able to lay down. Remember, just before him, Lion Farrell had gone and was buffeted by big gusts of winds. Brock goes and sends it. So now it's up to Judd Hankey's out of La Jolla, California, to try to up the ante. 95-6-6 gets you on top. A 91-3-3 just gets you on the podium. Judd Hankey's is going to try to feed off of his buddy Brock's big score and try to bring his own flavor in here. These guys are all so good. And as I said before, they all ride together. They all feed off each other. There we go. He had problems with that on run number one. Judd, big front three off that round bar. Much better line coming into hit number one. Check the flags, they're blowing a little bit. Front no side problem. 900, setting himself up. Switch backside 12 looks like. Is he gonna have enough momentum? He does, does. gets it around. He's gonna set himself up for potentially a triple cork 14 as well. One, two, nope, just the double cork 10. But still, very clean run. Much cleaner than run number one. He's got to be happy with that. 57-6-6 is what Judd had on his first run. Todd, this is going to be a big bump, as you pointed out. But remember, to get on the podium now, you need better than a 91-3. His rail features were all on point up top. Unique approach there off that round bar, popping into the quarter pipe. Like this right here. Gap out 270 over the entire rainbow. Look at that. And then pop off 270. He had problems with that on run number one. And then here, the 50 50 pop out front side 360. And then just motoring into these jumps. Switch back side 1260. And then down here at the bottom. And look at the flags. You saw yeah. them gusting as he came over. The flags are pegged. 
Ooh. Gets the switch back 12. And then snaps himself up into a double cork 1080 at the bottom. I love how he locks on those grabs and holds it for so long. Nice. Be interesting to see where this scores. I mean, that was good. He had good combos. The up top was really strong as well. Chad Hankey's now waiting for his score to come down. Certainly, he's going to be in the conversation with the 2022 Olympic Winter Games come around. And this field for Team USA is going to be stacked. But right now, he's concerning himself with the 2020 Dew Tour. Right now, the mark to beat is at 90. So comparing and contrasting, six, six. comparing his run to, uh, to uh, Brock Crouch's, you know, he had a nine, switch back 12, double cork 10. So it's going to be interesting to see where this place is. So a 90.66 for Judd Hankies. We're having a few technical issues getting those scores fed up to the top. A 90.66 has Judd Hankies currently in fourth place. So jump up into the top five for him. Ooh. Todd, we're only halfway through these second runs as we kick off the second half with Yuki Kadona. Why is the field so big? Because the powder that came in yesterday stopped us from having qualifying. So the 17-man field stays, and that becomes a final. Remember, best run counts. Oh, oh my, again! Just a little bit of relaxation there. That fresh snow takes out Yuki Kadono. Yuki Kadono had issues on run number one, but not that early, a 46-3-3. And this is where a problem that you might talk about, hey, if we had a 10-man final, we'd probably be going three runs best counts. Since it's so big at 17, it's a two-run best counts. And watch this right here. Yuki lands this, and he just relaxes. He's like, I've got this. But fresh snow and sharp edges can oftentimes right. result in disaster. Look at that. He's still Boom. rotating. Boom. Catches that toe edge and just smashes them into the ground. Full scorpion snow snake grab on the toe side edge, and that spells the end to Yuki Kadono's run. Mr. Happiness, Randy Rinikongas. He was sitting in third for a long time, and along came Brock Crouch, Red Gerard, Stolly Sonback bumped him down, now sitting in eighth place. He has a 76, Todd, but we talked about he has the ingredients. He does, and he's also the human embodiment of <laughs> sunshine. If you're lacking in vitamin D, just go stand <laughs> next to Renny Renacongas. Look at this. The unique line. He comes in. Miller flip again. Daryl Miller. Over. Daryl Miller. Not Chris. Eventually. That's right. Chris Miller just brought incredible style. The blunt slide 270 out as Renny comes up. Backside lip slide. 180 out of that. Coming in with a lot of speed. Look at that. Lost. Just floats into it. Just floating, trying to keep that speed up into hit number one. 900. Ooh. It's tucking here. There's a wind up. Oh, wow. is he off his line? Front 14, flat spin. And then just a big backside rodeo, 900. Oh my gosh. I didn't think he had nearly no enough speed for that. He had to carve into that third and final jump because his line was so, he went crazy Ivan in the left side of the course. Front side flat spin, 1440 off the second jump into a huge dump over backside rodeo to make it happen. Thank you, Rene. All right, here we go. This is the Miller flip as he carved across the course. I love that. And that is truly who Rene Renekongas yeah. is. He will find a different line from everyone else and make you smile while he's doing it. A lot going on right here. There's that blunt slide, 270 out. Then he gaps up, backside lip slide. Comes out of that fakie. There he goes. Landing backwards off of that, popping into that landing. And then right here, this is switch 180. Board slide, pops out 270. And there's that flat spin, front side 1440. I didn't know if he had it in him to get it around, and he does. He and then just because of the lack of speed, basically what he's done here is just lunge flipped himself into a backside rodeo 900 off the bottom jump and just makes it happen on run number two. He ad lib with a backside rodeo 9. That is amazing for Rene Rinikongas. Yeah.
Rennie's going to get to uh, 76. Is going to be his best score of the day. Not an improvement. That's where he was sitting. In eighth place. In eighth place. Oh. That, that was amazing. Oh, but wait. There you go, 93. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> See, that's what happens. You... You come in here, you have an in, uh, individual interpretation on yeah. that. And the, the flat fin frontside 1440 to the giant pot oh backside my. rodeo nine. <laughs> He's still celebrating that save. You're looking at Sven Dorgren. Last time we saw him, he gave us the GoPro course preview, a GoPro team rider. Set to drop in now in a second run. He was one of the guys, Todd, that did not have the first run that he wanted. Picked up an 88, but left so much potential out there with the judges. Sven Torgren, 270 on that first top rail. <laughs> Trying to combo up top. Love that butter box. It just kind of breaks up the momentum up here. And then here it is. This is the great equalizer. This flat bar into the setup for the first jump. Holding on to it. Can he keep the speed up? Looking better than his first run. Up and over. Big double cork front 10. And then into the final jump. Whoa! Yes. We have got a comp now, ladies and gentlemen. Either this course is starting to run faster, or these guys are just kind of finding their <laughs> mojo. Stalefish, backside, 1440. Mm. On that final jump, rider out of Sweden, based on what Rene Rene Congas' right. score is, I mean, that was a big score. Rene rips, I'm surprised that he was boosted up that high because the judges have been really critical about things lately today. And there's that perfect setup. It's all about that setup into the first jump. And there's the double court front 10. Squeaking that around for Sven. And that would set him up for this flat spin. Look at the flags. Watch the wind up and the snap. There's one, there's two, there's three, and he's gonna squeak one more in here. There's four rotations. Backside Stalefish, 1440. That is such a gutsy maneuver, Todd. Seeing that the flags were blowing to go for that. That was so sick. That was sick. Awesome. Current standings, Brock Crouch leads with a 95. Rene just jumped into second, and Red in third. And just moments ago, Rene just shocked everyone with that 93-6-6. So will the judges respond in kind with Sven Thorgrim? Tell you what, the judges are getting a lot more loose with the pen and pencil right now. It wouldn't shock me if we see a big leap for Sven Thorgrim right here in the, in the running, too. And for the first half of the first runs, it was Mikey Cicerelli's 80 that was leading the way. So now the 90 club is in full effect wow. with a 93-3. Sven Thorgren, welcome to the podium. Red Gerard will go down the fourth, but he... When Red Gerard's score of 93 dropped, Todd, I thought, well, maybe it's game over. Because if the wind picks up and the conditions deteriorate, Red's going to walk away. And now Red Gerard finds himself in fourth place. So Mark McMorris now, the next man up. McMorris is already in a good position with a 90.33, which we thought, surely that's a podium score, Todd. That's sixth place now. All right. Well, if McMorris wants to find himself on top, because I know Mark is a winner. Yep. He's going to want to bring out both of those triple 14s. Quick glance of the flags down below that are blowing. He's going to be perfect up top to keep that speed up. Mark a little wild on his exits off of some of these rails, but he can more than make up for that once he gets into the jump section. He's one of the only riders that has two triple corks in his bag. So Mark Morris looking clean as he enters into the three pack of jumps. Coming flags are switch. still. Switch backside wow. 12. First jump, fighting it to stay on his line. There's a wind up. Big double cork 10. A lot of speed into this final jump. Front side triple cork 14. There it is. Puts it down in typical McMorris fashion. He was riding he was a fucking Bronco the entire way down that course. The rail section, while his rails were perfect, 
definitely fighting it a little bit in the flats. Oh my gosh. He's claiming it towards the bottom and still fighting the landing. Jeez, you want to talk about it. That took a lot of strength. That fresh snow, there's just a lot of inconsistencies in yeah. the runouts of some of these features. Watch Mark, okay, when he's on the rails, perfect. Watch as he's kind of riding out. That fresh snow is starting to harden up again or something because it's just been wild for these guys to stay on the right edge. And in between jump one and jump two, Mark was kind of dealt a little bit of a sketchy landing. There's that butterbox feature. Really, if you want to draw your attention to any place where things could have gone wildly wrong, it was definitely in between jump number one and jump two in the flats. So switch backside 1260 on the first jump. In between these jumps, watch. He's toe edge, oh! he's heels. The upper body wants to keep him rotating, fights it, almost finds himself in the fresh snow. Somehow gets it back together again enough for a double cork backside 1080, squeaks it over the knuckle and then sets himself up for this. There's the first dip of the shoulder, the second dip, and you can tell he's forcing it. He's got that other arm tucked up underneath his knee. And when he lands this, comes around, triple cork, front side, 1440, lands, gets over to that fresh snow, and is just trying to fight it. That back arm behind him, claiming it, almost goes <laughs> down. I thought he was going to do a Euro carve. Oh my gosh, that would have been horrendous. You slam. <laughs> in the come out. Oh man. McMorris. Oh wow, that is kind of 80 dig on a, a, in his final run. It's gotta be what if he rails they didn't like the exits? Up top on the rail run outs. Wow. But you can see Rene Rene Congas is kind of stunned on that too, but really it comes down to what the judges are being hypercritical on. So Mark McMorris, a 90.33 is not even good enough for a top six as he sits in seventh place just ahead of fellow countryman Mikey Cicerelli who led for most of the first run with an 80. So we're down to the final five. Max Perot, if anyone needs a big run here, it's Max since Perot. We already told his story coming back as a cancer survivor, and here he is getting full-fledged into competition again. Todd, he has the skills to top a 95.66. Can he get it done on this course? We're going to have to see. Max is super clean and technical on his rails. He needs to be perfect, though. Switch backside, lip slide. Switch 180, 180, combo off. Max is just kind of holding out here until he gets into the jumps, and then he can just start winging through the air. Max, right. nice, staying up. Here comes his specialty. Flags are still. Whoa, oh. and just not enough speed. Wow, Max having a lot of trouble with the speed. Double back. Wildcat off the second jump. Unfortunately for yep. Max, the jump, the plug. all the rails were perfect. Just came down to wax, it seems like. So Max skips the third and final jump on the slope style course and just not feeling it. He would have needed a 93-3 to jump into a podium position. He's not going to get it here today. Check, oh check this out right here. Max just trying to come in, just not maybe just not enough of a snap. But he knew it was over. Look at the flags. Just squeaks into the double oh. backflip up and over. see right there oh. you know that's not what he wanted to do unfortunately for max today was not his day so pro it is an improvement 36 6 hands go in the air smile on the face he'll be back and then there were four mons roisland we saw him earlier would it just shock you to the core, Todd Richards, if I told you Mons Royland currently is in last place with a 15.66. Nowhere to go but up. That's true. I'll tell you right right now, Brock Crouch is down at the bottom just biting his fingernails. Oh! Oh, jeez. Brock Crouch dodged another one. Dodging a bullet. And I'll tell you, I've known Brock for a long time since he was basically a baby. You know, just a little snowboard rat riding around. This kid has got the best attitude. He's a little spacey at times. <laughs> He's got a nickname of Brick. 
But man, oh man, is this kid just the embodiment of snowboarding. He's just, you know, he loves it. He lives it. He's more hype than anybody else. He's a mood enhancer when you get around him. It would be amazing if Brock came away from the Dew Tour with the big W. So American sits on top of the board right now in Brock Crouch. We've got a Canadian, another American, and a Norwegian to wrap up the competition. And they're all chasing that man, 95.66. It's like he still can't believe it. <laughs> Welcome to, to the pressure cooker. pressure cooker. This is what happens, Brock, when you're on top of the podium and you got some heavies to come down. They stick a camera in your face and they want to see tears. <laughs> Bring tears. So 95.66, but it still doesn't feel comfortable. Normally, that's where you sit back and go, there's no way anyone tops that. However, Darcy Sharp, Red Gerard, and Stolly Sonbeck will all have a say. If it makes you feel any better, Brock, you are guaranteed no worse than fourth. So Darcy Sharp will be the first man to take a swing at Brock Crouch's score, the 23-year-old out of Whistler. His sister fresh off a of victory earlier today in the Women's Ski Modified Superpipe. Darcy 50-50, 180 into the quarter pipe. He's so good on rails. Actually, Darcy's just amazing all around. Yeah, great ride. Just a, a fraction of the talent that's come out of Canada. X Games champion, fresh off a win there. Straight from Aspen, right over here to Copper to put it to work on the slope style course. Carrying it deep. Too deep? I don't know. We will find out shortly. Maybe just squeaking around in the backside 900, setting up. Switch backside 1260. One more hit. Big double cork frontside oh. 10 and sits right oh. after putting his board down. I was just about to praise his waxer. What kind of maple syrup did he drip on that beauty? Because he had the speed and the distance to clear the knuckles. Bullets flying everywhere around Brock <laughs> Crouch. He's like a rubber band in the wind, dodging bullets. But unfortunately for Darcy Sharp, who had an otherwise flawless upper section, that last jump would claim his run for the title. You see the overview here of just how many options there are. And that right there, I really love the way he kind of gaps into that transition, makes this line truly his own. And then down here at the bottom, basically I thought he had it. As he gets that grab a little bit late, lands the trip of the double cork front 10 and just washes out. He just has to slide out to his butt there. So now, Brock Crouch can do no better than a podium finish of third no worse. worse. I mean, no he's worse. Guaranteed Pardon himself me. a spot on the podium. He's trying to look cool. You know he's just freaking out inside. 95-6-6 with two to go. Red Gerard, who had the lead after run number one by way of that 93, and then it'll be the defending champion, Stolly Sonbeck. Stolly currently sits in fifth place with a 91-3. Red, another one of these riders who knows how to pull it out in a pinch. Do you do the same run if you're Red Gerard? I think that Red has got, you know, he, he's got options. It's so cool to see him coming in here. Big Melon 360 into the quarter pipe. No slide, 180 out. Switch back 270 coming out forward. Super hard to counter that body movement. Combos are looking good up top. This is going to be the cork off of this. Dumps it into an underflip. Now to keep his speed up. What's he got off the first hit? Red holding on. Winding it up. Back 12. Into the final hit. Switch backside. Triple cork. Wow. Switch backside, triple cork, 1440. A little bit of a wheelie as he came into the finish grab, but that was an amazing run for Red Gerard. Switch back, triple. Comes through in the clutch. This is going to be a big, big score for Red Gerard. 
And just think, Red Gerard, just 19, already with an Olympic gold medal in his pocket from Pyeongchang. He is such a clutch rider in the big moments. Wow, I am still in shock. I don't know. It, I did not expect to see a switchback no. triple. I love that right there. Switchback 270 on, coming out straight. 50-50. Front 180 onto the butter box. Switch backside. 360 off. And then that set him up here. It comes in switch. 180, board slide, dips that shoulder. Under flip, 450 off. Sets him up perfectly for that first jump. First jump. Comes around. Stomps that out. Setting him up here. And it was all about concentrating on what would happen down here at the bottom. Switch, triple cork, 1440. Lift! A yeah. bit of a touch, a little, little bit wheelie. of a touch, but still, arguably the hardest trick that's been done off the jumps here today. Front 10, back 12, it's a hand switch swipe. backside, triple cork 1440. That's the heaviest combo of the tricks too. we've seen down here today. This is going to be a big score. I think Brock Crouch is going to get bumped out of the lead. He's better than a 95-6-6. Red Gerard to go into the lead. Get on the podium, he's getting better than a 93.33. Brock Crouch is 95-6-6, leads the way with one more athlete to go. Brock knows he's on the podium for sure. Renny Rinakongas is the one that's probably really nervous, currently sitting in second with Stale still to come. And the score, 97-3! This truly is Red's backyard. What a combo. Now, oh my goodness. All this fanfare is going on down here at the bottom like it's over. Meanwhile, it ain't over. Last year's champion, Stale Sandbeck, is still up there in the start gate. Do not yeah. rule him out. He just got the word that Red Gerard jumped into the lead with a 97.33. For him to get on the podium now, he's better than a 93.6. To get a win, he needs a 97.34 or better. Wow. Six Americans in the 17-man final, and right now the Americans sit one and two. Stale has something to say about that. The defending champion, last man on course, Stali Sonbach. Let's see, he's trying to be as precise as possible up here on the rails. There's that front 270 out. Does he have something that can counter a switch backside triple cork 1440 at the bottom? There's that knuckle drag up and over into the first jump. Here we go. Two more to go. Stale looking strong. Ooh, Ooh, almost knuckling on jump number two. I like the way you think. Carrying a lot of momentum and squeaking it around. Stale Sandbeck coming in <laughs> with the flat spin counter to what Red Gerard brought with the triple shoulder dips. What is going to happen oh, here? Man. <laughs> that is a monster score to take down. 97-3-3. What happened to well, my I'll tell you what, you know, there was Red Gerard currently in the lead. So good up top. Look at this gap out. Lip slide. Pops out 270. So into that precise. landing. So precise. Look at that. And then he goes into that knuckle huck right here. Backside 360, hand drag. Up and over that knuckle. And then just trying to make it happen. Here you see it. That's what that's for. That's a knuckle to get hucked off of. Stale Sandbeck. Is it going to be enough? 1260s. There's a cap 12. 
see here the flat spin, the counter, like Stale's answer to the triple cork, dipping that shoulder. Stale keeps it relatively flat in the air. Oh, this is going to be a hard one for the judges to work out. I kind of don't think it's going to be Enough. a 97, but I think that he may be bumping Rene out. So to bump Rene off, he needs better than a 93.66. To take the lead, he needs better than a 97.3. To go into second, he needs better than a 95. There are the current standings right now. Two Americans and the Norwegian with Stali sitting in third place with a 94. Whoa, there it comes. 94. Stale jumping up into third place. I knew it was going to happen. I just felt like Stale's up, up top portion was a little bit stronger. <laughs> And a shoulder ride for Red Gerard. Stali Sandback jumping onto the podium to join the two Americans. It is Red Gerard that claims the victory. Brock Crouch second, and Stali Sandback in third. Let's send it down to Tina Dixon with the winner's interview. <laughs> yeah. Get a ladder. Uh, I know, get a ladder, right? Um, congratulations, Red. And Stolly as well. What a podium out here. Brock Crouch finishing up in that second spot. Um, when I talked to you after that first run, you said you weren't really quite sure what you were going to do on those jumps. Um, at what point did you decide to switch backside triple? Well, I kind of had this feeling the whole time. This is like these snowboarders are messed up. Everyone's insane. Everyone's riding great. Course is awesome. Uh, I kind of knew second run people were going to start going crazy. Triple cork started pulling out. And yeah, I just kind of decided that was, I, I probably have to step it up on the last jump. Brock Crouch threw down and since that run, I mean, it was just a completely new contest. How much did he motivate you and what were your impressions of his run? Are you kidding me? I mean, when I, he was just in a massive avalanche two years ago and then he goes second run and lays down one of the most insane runs I've seen. And I cannot tell you how good it feels to have our buddy back in the contest and back on the podium. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Dutor, it seems like not that long ago you started coming here as a rookie. Uh, how much is it meant for you to come back and now win this event? It means a lot. I don't know. I'm speechless, to be <laughs> completely honest. I grew up watching the Dutor, the US Open, the X Games. So to have an X Games medal and a Dutor medal, I cannot believe it. I'm like beyond. And with my best boy. Yeah, let's see if we can get Brock Crouch. Brock, get over here, because uh, you kind of set the tone. This was all your fault, the rest of those runs. Um, the moments you had watching everyone go down, what were those thoughts? Uh, I was pretty nervous, but honestly, when I watch my best friend drop in, I watch him ride these courses every single day, and so I knew that he was probably going to put down a really, really good run, because I've seen him do that run like 200 times now. So. I don't know. I, I can't believe it. Honestly, this has all been a dream, and I, this is amazing. Going to Jackson to film tomorrow. How long have you waited to be on a podium like this and be on a podium with Red Gerard? Yeah, I mean, today is literally a dream come true. At X Games, I got fourth, and I, that night I was just so bummed. I was like, oh, I just want to get on a podium so bad. Did I think it was going to happen here? No, but it did, and I am so thankful for everybody that is a part of my comeback, and I'm really happy to be with them. Big congratulations. Thank you. What a contest, Todd. No question about it, Tina. Youth is served today as Brock and Red represent 19 and 20-year-olds with the defending champion Stolly Sonback coming in third place. An amazing performance by all the athletes as it came down to those last five and six runs. They kept upping the ante, Todd Richards. Red Gerard claims the win here, picks up the Dew Tour title. Brock Crouch in second and Stolly Sonbeck in the third. But more importantly, seven athletes cracking the 90-point barrier, Todd. The progression was amazing. It was, and after seeing run number one, I kind of thought it was going to be a waxing event, but all these guys came out. Run number two, there was some definite heat being thrown around. Hats off once again to Snow Park Technologies, the Woodward Park crew to come up here and make it as perfect as it was and give these guys the opportunity to really throw down. Red Gerard, and just backing up what Red said, Brock was in such a savage snowboarding incident a year yeah, ago. And average. to come back from that to this is incredible. Red Gerard has the triple now. He's got an X Games medal, a Dutour medal, an Olympic gold medal. He's getting it done at the ripe age of 19. <laughs> Clearly the best rider on the mountain today, 97.33 on his second run 
to get the victory ahead of Brock Crouch and Stolly Sonback, who had the last say and was able to jump into the podium. Truly an amazing performance by all the athletes today and an amazing course here at Dew Tour 2020. The men's snowboard slopestone final is now complete. Red Gerard is the champion here at Copper Mountain. The hits just keep on coming at Dew Tour 2020. Mountain Dew team rider Red Gerard in his own backyard gets it on his second and final run, a 97.33. Brock Crouch had laid down a beautiful run, thought he had it done, 95.66 before Red bumped him off, and Stolly Sonback, the defending champion GoPro team rider, came in with a final run of the day, and in clutch Norwegian fashion, Stolly, a 94 to jump himself onto the podium. Wow, when Mother Nature reared up with wind and gust and it looked like there wasn't gonna be enough speed for a lot of these guys to clear that second and third jump, they came up with the goods. Red Gerard, Brock Crouch, Stolly Sonbeck, the list goes on and on. Renny Rinnekongas was amazing, Sven Thorgren, Judd Hankies, you gotta give him credit. And of course, Mark McMorris, Max Perot, Mons Roysland, Darcy Sharp. I mean, what a list, 17 of the world's best here at Copper Mountain in the end. It was another Gerard party, a la Pyeongchang 2018. Red Gerard dipped deep into his bag of tricks, and as he told Tina Dixon, he knew after what Brock Crouch laid down, he would have to do something special, and he came up with it on the final hit of his final run here in the slope style competition. Todd Richards, I can't say enough about how impressive this was with Red Gerard coming up with the goods. We'll send it down now, DC and the award ceremony. You know, one of the things I think is so cool about this event is you can have such contra contrasting styles. You know, Stale, he spins all of his spins flat. He doesn't triple cork anything. There's no, it's not that he can't. He's just opted, that is his style, and to be rewarded. Sometimes when it was flavor of the month, corks, corks have been real hot in snowboarding for a while. Stale is still just paving his own path. The defending champion finds himself on the podium. And then this kid right wow, here. Brock. Carlsbad, California, unbelievable. The comeback kid from last year with a broken back and his face was jacked up and he barely had any teeth. There was so much crazy yeah. stuff going on. For him to come back from that this strong, unreal. Avalanche not strong enough to take down Brock Crouch as he is back riding in a great form. But I'll tell you what, he needed it and he did it.
Red Gerard went huge on that final jump. It's unreal how many people here support Red Gerard. Summit County, Colorado loves their heroes. And Red Gerard already having a signature park here at Copper. Goes home with the big W. Unbelievable Talk, We riding. talked about he's got the gold medal at X Games, gold medal now at Dew Tour. He's got a gold medal from the little thing called the Olympics. It's kind of like the EGOT, the Emmy, the Grammy, the Oscar, and the Tony. So I would say the U.S. Open would probably be the final piece of that EGOT, right? Here we go. Dew Tour champion Red Gerard Mountain Dew team rider on his final run, lays it down to the tune of 97.3 for the win. Brock Crouch, 95.6, and Stolly Sonbeck, a 94 to join them on the podium. We've been in some heavy competitions before, but this one, uh, I'm going to put it right up there because what looked like you said, a wax contest after one run, what they did once Brock Crouch dropped that 95 was amazing. Yeah, it's, it's so impressive. I mean, these guys have been riding so hard. Yesterday was a full-on powder day, which will blow the knees out of a normal human. But these guys have come in here, absolutely crushed it. You can see the entire clan out there supporting. <laughs> Think there's going to be a party tonight in Silverthorne? Those are all the brothers. Big, big weekend. For Red Gerard. Wow, so final thoughts, Todd Richards, on what we just saw drop here at Copper. Changing the guard? Quite possibly. Red Gerard, Brock Crouch, Stolly Sandbeck. The future of park snowboarding is in really good hands. No question about it. Once again, the podium here at the men's snowboard slope style final. Red Gerard gets the win. Brock Crouch in second. Stolly Sonbeck in third. Nothing less to say except the world of snowboarding and snowboarding progression in very good hands and in a very strong state. So the State of the Union at the Dew Tour 2020 is Red Gerard Brock Crouch, Stolly Sonbeck, and a whole lot more progression. As everyone came out and tried different lines, the options were so many. Big props to SPT and Woodward for giving us such a great course to deal with after yesterday's epic powder day. And they turned up the volume, and this is what we got. And the, the pressure was applied. And definitely the best thing for everyone out there who's watching, you can come to Copper. You can ride these Woodward features. Red's backyard down here at the bottom. You can ride that for free. It's a hike park of rails. They do such an amazing job. Danny Davis's Peace Park, Red's backyard, yep. and just putting together perfect freestyle situations for you to get into. Unreal. And while we celebrate what great accolades that happened today in the state of snowboarding we want to step back and remember the man that really made it all possible and it's so fitting that two Burton riders on top of the podium as we take a moment to remember the one and only Jake Burton